President Trump also spoke about a broader problem in the United States, the lack of respect for life. We also need to create a culture in our country that cherishes life and human dignity. That's part of what we're talking about, a culture that condemns violence and never glorifies violence. A panel at the conference yesterday focused on defunding Planned Parenthood. Catherine Glenn Foster, who was on that panel, joins us now from CPAC. She is the president and CEO of Americans United for Life. Catherine, welcome back to the program. Do you think President Trump should have mentioned something more specific about the pro-life issue in his speech today? You know, this morning, President Trump strongly affirmed the need for the respect for the dignity of every single human life. And just yesterday morning, Vice President Pence, who also spoke here, just reminded the entire crowd about the measures that President Trump has taken to really further the life-affirming mission that this administration has stood behind. He reminded the crowd about the Mexico City policy, how President Trump reinstated and expanded the Mexico City policy, which prevents U.S. taxpayer funding from being used to fund foreign and international organizations either performing or promoting abortion overseas. He also reminded us about the steps that the administration has taken towards defunding and allowing states to defund. And the really pivotal piece of this, and particularly with this crowd that, um, that was so encouraged and enthusiastic, cheering loudly at those words, are that these people who have come from across the nation, the CPAC attendees, they are able to go back to their home states where the reduced gridlock at the state level means that we have the opportunity for great progress going state by state to defund Planned Parenthood. Well, you note, you note all the uh, commitments that President Trump and Vice President Pence has made to the pro-life movement. Some have in the past doubted his sincerity on the issue. Uh, how committed do you think he is in terms of engaging with pro-life groups and talking about the life issue with you guys? I would say that he is extremely committed. We have seen that firsthand with, uh, with his engagement with the March for Life, with the one-on-one -on -one meetings that he and his administration have, um, have even instigated, have reached out for with pro-life leaders, uh, with many of the stances that the administration has taken. They are doing what they can to fulfill the campaign promises that President Trump made. And between, um, between the RNC platform and, um, and President Trump and his personal commitment to life that he has repeatedly um, espoused, uh, I, I am very pleased with the progress that he has made in this first year. Okay, well, let's talk about what's going on outside Washington, D.C., because you mentioned some of the momentum there. What are conservatives doing on the local and the state level to protect the unborn? Well, at the local and state level, you don't have that same political gridlock that you have in D.C. You don't see the same holdups with the Senate where, for example, one bill that we should all be able to agree on, the Pain-Capable Unborn Child Protection Act, which would uh, prevent most abortions after five months when science has shown that babies can feel pain, when that can't even advance to the full Senate vote. That's a problem, even when a majority of senators want that vote. So at the state and local levels, we see the possibility for great impact. More than uh, 20 states, 24 states, have already defunded in some way, with at least some funds, um, the abortion industry. They've said that public funding, U.S. taxpayer funding, cannot be used to perform or refer for abortions. And that's a huge step in the right direction. There are a lot of different uh, vehicles and methods that that can be accomplished with. One of those methods is AUL's own defunding the abortion industry and advancing Women's Health Act, which creates a tiering system by which organizations, healthcare facilities that do provide comprehensive of women's health care are placed at a high tier where they are in line for, um, for health care funding from the government and organizations that do not provide comprehensive health care, as Planned Parenthood, for example, does not provide comprehensive women's health care, they are either at the lowest tier or are prevented from receiving taxpayer funding. So that's one of the ways that we've seen that that can happen. And just taking a step back, 
we see that states really are in the best position to be able to determine at the ground level where the taxpayer dollars they receive and they manage and monitor where those taxpayer dollars should be going. When you look at states like Iowa, for example, and, and the stats are, are replicated on the national level, we see this um, time and time again. We see that when it, when it comes to Planned Parenthood, um, the total services are down, the total patients are down, the cancer screening and prevention services are down. What's up? Abortion numbers and government funding. That's one of the many reasons why it's time to defund Planned Parenthood. Catherine Glenn Foster, President and CEO of Americans United for Life, talking to us some, from CPAC. Thanks so much for talking with us, Catherine. Thanks for having me.